What is up? Hope you guys are doing well today. Thank you for watching. I've got Facebook streaming. I've got Instagram streaming. We're doing the Feta Effect. It's Friday. It's 1130. We do this every week. I need to introduce myself though. I want to talk to you guys today about why you need a coach, what a coach should be doing for you. And before we do that, I need to talk to you about who I am, what I do, and what I believe. So as you know, I personally have a belief that everybody has the right to build a life by design. What is life by design? It's your ideal picture of how life should play out, okay? It's when you have complete freedom over your time and you're able to do whatever it is you wanna do with that time. Now, most of us don't do that life by design thing. Most of us aren't living life by design because we're spending 40 years to life trading time for money so we can just basically live paycheck to paycheck. Now, the reality is this. Time does need to be traded for money. Bottom line, time has to be traded for money. That does not mean, though, that it needs to be your time, and it does not mean that it needs to be your money. And so what I do is I help my clients increase their income, increase their savings, and multiply their money through passive income-producing investments so that the assets that they own can do the time for money trade for them. That gives you freedom, and that allows you to build out life by design. So that's who I am. That's what I believe. I want to talk to you guys today about coaching. I want to share with you why you need a coach. Before that, I want to share with you my experience with having coaches, my story with it. So my first coach, um, I think it was when I did Taekwondo. I was in fourth grade. I was in fourth grade doing Taekwondo. I had a sensei, which is probably what I'm going to make my kids call me when I have them. Uh, but I had a sensei. And my sensei was my coach. He would teach me how to do all of the different Taekwondo exercises. And what I remember about that is he would instruct the class. And it was actually really good coaching. He would instruct the class. He would show us what to do. We would practice with our partner. And then he would come through and critique. So that was my first coach ever. And that was probably like my favorite um, memorable childhood definition of having a coach. Now, unfortunately, as I grew older, it got worse. Okay. I got into basketball. Okay, In basketball, I didn't feel like I had great coaching. A lot of it was just volunteer, right? So people volunteer their time, they coach the teams, and it's really just kind of winging it. And, and I want to share with you because those are two of the contrasts between what a coach should be and what a coach shouldn't be. Now, I want to handle something real quick. Before we dive into the specifics on having a coach and what that means, a coach is not a buddy. A coach is not somebody that you're just buddying with and spending time with. A lot of us, when we hear the word coaching, we have good fuzzy memories about when we were in school and we were on the sports team and we had all this camaraderie and all of our buddies were there. And really when you're in that mindset, you're not looking for a coach, you're just looking for friends. And so I'm here to tell you your coach is not that. Okay, You don't hire a coach just so you can have a friend and someone to hang out with. You hire a coach for specific reasons. And the reason you would hire a coach is you are trying to go somewhere that you have never been before. And you are trying to get help, direction. The word coach actually comes from the term stagecoach, like a carriage. So think about that relationship. You get into a carriage, first of all, you need to know where you're going. Okay, you can't just get into a carriage and be like, hey, I just want to chill with you. You need to be able to tell the driver, where am I going? Think Uber, right? You can't get into Uber and just be like, oh, yeah, take me where you think is going gonna, is gonna to be best. You need to know. So you need to know where you're going. Your coach needs to have been there, okay? If they've never been there, they can't take you there, right? If you say, hey, I want to get to this part of town, and they're like, oh, I've never been there, but we can figure it out. I probably am not going to hire that person. So your coach needs to know where you're going and have also been there. Okay? And then their job is to actually get you to that destination, get you there safely, and get you there on time. That's the only three things you need from your coach. Get me there, get me there safely, get me there on time. Now, here are the things you should be asking yourself. If you're looking at hiring a coach, I do believe you need one, but you need the right coach. I've had some terrible experiences with coaches. Now I spend um, probably a little more than 20 or 30,000 a year on coaching for me and I have a great coach and a great team now. But prior to that I didn't. It's because I couldn't answer these three questions. So there's three things you need to ask. Who does my coach need to be? What kind of character traits do they need to be as as far as their existence as a coach in my life with that relationship? So I've got a list here I'm going to read off and it's about who your coach should be, what kind of a coach they should be. So first, they should not be your advisor. Advice means opinion. You do not need an opinion. 
you, you, you can get an opinion from anybody. If you want an opinion, you can call your mom and say, hey, mom, what do you think? And she'll tell you. Opinions are worthless. Everybody has one. That means that they're oversaturated, they're overvalued, and they're underperforming. You don't need an opinion. So your coach should not be an advisor. Your coach should be somebody that is able to give you questions that allow you to come up with your answers, help you refine those answers, and then formulate them into an action plan. So I'm going to read a couple things your coach should be. Okay, Your coach should be someone that's asking you those questions, like I said. Your coach should also be somebody that calls you out. Okay, I have a great coach, and I'll share with you guys one of my coaches, Michael Burt, um, super coach. If you know Michael Burt, make sure that you go follow his page. But Michael Burt is a great coach for me because I'm one of the most hard-headed people that you're ever going to meet. And so he calls me on my bullshit. Just last week, he literally chewed me out on the phone for like 15 minutes because I was about to make a stupid decision. Okay, your coach should be able to do that. If it's just a friend, your friend probably can't do that because you have the friend boundary. Okay, so your coach asks great questions, they call you out on your bullshit, okay, and then you need to make sure that your coach also has results. You're going to get whatever your coach has, okay, if they have this result, all they're going to do is teach you their system, and so if you don't want what they have, then you shouldn't work with that coach. So that's what they should have. The next question you need to be asking is practically, what should my coach do? What are the actual functions my coach should do for me? Okay, and I'm going to read this list off. So the key here is your coach should be doing something like there should be action. And here's why, guys, if you are working with a coach and they don't do something for you, all you're doing is you're calling them once a month and that's it. If they're not doing and participating, you don't have a coach. You have a cheerleader. Okay, if you want results, you're not going to get results from a cheerleader. You need to have a coach. A coach is going to participate. They're going to get involved. So here's some of the stuff that they should be doing. Your coach is gonna help you get really specific on your long-term goals. So that's the first action. They're gonna help you get clarity on your long-term goals and those goals are based on what you believe your purpose is. Everybody has a purpose and your goals should be based on that. Your coach is gonna get you clarity on that and they're not just gonna get you excited like going to a Tony Robbins event but they're gonna get you excited and then dial it down into specific tactics targets that you're going to go after on a daily, a weekly, and a monthly basis. That's what your coach should be doing. Now, once you have those targets, they need to help you confront your current situation. And what I mean by confront is face where you currently are without flinching. Okay. Too many of us want to achieve big results, but we don't want to confront where we are. We don't want to confront the things that we're responsible for. Too much that we don't want to confront, your coach should have you confronting those things. And once you confront them, organize it. Okay, yes, this is mine. I caused it. This is where I'm at. This is reality. And then organize it. How do I piece all of this together so that I can take that next step? That's what your coach should be doing for you. The next thing that your coach needs to do is growing your network. Guys, I've been in business for seven years, and it wasn't until this year when I realized the importance of my network. What do I mean by network? My network is my group of connections and also their connections different degrees out. So it's not just like my friends and family. It's my friends. It's my family. It's going to be the people that I do business with. It's going to be the people that I don't do business with. It's going to be the people that all of those guys know. It's going to be their networks. Your coach should be actively growing that network. Okay. And in order to grow your network, it means they need to have one in the first place because they're going to be helping graft their network into yours, giving you credibility with the people that they know, thus opening up the door for opportunity. Okay, so those are some of the things your coach should do. The last thing that you need to ask yourself is what should my coach have? They should have tangible things you can look at that you can pinpoint and say, yes, this makes them a valid option for for me to hire them as a coach. So I have a list here I'm going to read that I came up with. It's things your coach should have. The first is results. Guys, if they don't have the results you're looking for, they just can't help you. Just because they're great on Instagram, just because they figured out email marketing, just because they take really cool pictures in front of somebody else's Lamborghini does not mean that they have anything. Okay, So they need to have been where you're going. They need to have results to show and be able to prove that to you. If they can't, they're not your coach. Just because they have a title does not make them a coach. So they need to have results. They should have a system. Anything worth doing once is worth doing over and over and over again. Okay, If it cannot be repeated, it's not actually success. If your coach does not have a system that can be duplicated 
and it works 100% of the time when it's implemented correctly, you don't have a coach, you have a magician. Okay, you don't need somebody that pulls rabbits out of their hat and randomly gets people successful and can't duplicate that when you hire them. You can't, you can't take an accident and have it work with you. It needs to be repeatable and duplicatable, which means they have to have a system. Okay, Cavrone says a coach needs to see your strengths and blind spots. I agree with that, and I would also add that you need to know that about yourself first. If you don't know that about yourself, your coach can't help. So really know yourself, and we'll get into that in a second, but really know yourself so that you can help your coach see those blind spots and you can tell them what you're operating with and they can help with those things. Okay, so they need to have a system. They need to make sure that, you need to make sure that they do have a network, as I mentioned. If they don't have a network, guys, you're, you're playing with a small field. You're playing in a small pool and you're not gonna expand out and your coach should be doing that for you. So the question on the terms of what they have, you need to be asking, do I want what they have? Okay, I said that before, but when you look at a coach, you need to ask yourself, do I want what they have? If you can't answer yes to that question, don't hire them, right? So those are all of the things that you should be looking for in a coach. If they meet that criteria, then you next need to be looking at yourself, okay? It's not just the coach, it's a two-way relationship. So I have a contract I sign with my clients, and literally in that contract, it says, I will not work harder for you than you're willing to work for yourself, because it's two ways. So here's what you need to make sure of. You need to be obsessed. If you're gonna hire a coach, you need to be obsessed. Why? Because I'm gonna call you on your crap. And if you're not obsessed with getting to the result, you're gonna find that annoying and you're gonna start, start avoiding me. You're not gonna wanna do all of the things it's gonna take if you're not obsessed. You can't just be motivated, you can't just be driven. You literally need to be relentless, willing to do anything to get there, obsessed, okay? The next thing you need to have is you need to be able to do whatever it takes. If you have limits on what you're willing to do within moral and ethical boundaries, then you're not gonna succeed. You need to be looking at what are the, the few things I won't do, I'll go ahead and take those off the table. Other than that, I'll literally do anything. Okay, as long as I don't cross my moral and ethical boundaries, there's not a limit on what I will do. Why? Because I'm gonna ask you to do things you've never done before. If I'm working with you as your coach, you're gonna get really uncomfortable. And it's because I'm gonna ask you to think differently, I'm gonna ask you to act differently, I'm gonna ask you to behave differently, to adapt different systems and routines, and it's not stuff that you're used to doing. So you need to be willing to do whatever it takes, okay? And then the last thing is you need to have money to pay a coach, right? Any coach that is free, and go ahead and take the word coach out of there, anything that is free typically is not worth having. You are gonna, you are gonna get exactly what you pay for. So if you're working with a free coach, I guarantee that you're getting just an opinion. You're not getting expertise. You're not getting a network. You're not getting results. You're just getting a conversation, okay? And it's not gonna help you move the ball forward. It's wasting your time. And it's unethical of you to not pay your coach because you're encouraging that person to keep operating that way. So you need to be willing to pay money for a coach. And here's why, guys. I talk about wealth and investing all the time. You are your best investment, hands down. You are your best investment. If you are not willing to invest in yourself, nothing you do is gonna pan out. You are your best investment. What does that mean? It means you need to be willing to spend the most money on yourself. I drop thousands of dollars on myself not to brag about things that I own. I'm not saying I buy cars and all this other stuff. I, I spend it on my own knowledge, on my own ability, on accountability, because those are the things that matter. Okay, so you need, you need to be willing to pay a coach. I pay, like I said, thousands a year for a coach. And that's something I'm, I'm okay with doing because I know that that investment's gonna pay off. Why? Because I'm the investment. I'm never gonna quit on myself. So I'm putting myself in a position where I'm accountable. I have to make sure that I drive and go forward and I have someone that's making sure I'm taking the right route. It's my job to be able to pay for that and it's my job to act on the plan that we're implementing. So guys, that's why you need a coach. That's what a coach should do for you. Really quick, I wanna to pitch to you why I'm a good fit for your, for your coach. I could be a good fit actually, as long as those criteria meet for us, but I wanna tell you about my coaching program, okay? So in order to look more into my coaching program, real quick, go check out my website, www.wealthxpro.com and you can insert your information, ask about our coaching uh, program, I can get you a phone call, we can do a consultation and see if it's a good fit. But here's my track record, okay? So this is what I'm looking at when I'm working with clients. If you're looking at having me as your coach, I basically work with clients on a basis where in the first 90 days, 
we typically see a 30% increase in income. Okay, not just passive income, active income. We're looking at how can you get more money in the door today? A 30% increase in income. We see a guaranteed increase in your savings rate. I'm making sure that you're putting money away every month and that money goes back into your own knowledge and ability and then it goes to your investments after that. Okay, now lastly, my clients see an eight to 12% fixed annual return on their investments. Why? Because I have the expertise, I have the network, I have the experience and the introductions to get them in cash flowing assets. We're not talking Wall Street, we're not talking about invisible shares that you buy from strangers, we're talking about real cash flowing assets. And guys, what I'm looking at doing with my clients is exactly what I've talked about. Setting long-term goals, dialing those down into daily, weekly, and monthly actionable steps, creating a plan, confronting where you're currently at, organizing that to your advantage, and then implementing. We're talking frequently. I'm introducing you to my network. I'm getting you in there. So if you are looking for a coach and you're somebody that's obsessed with their potential, okay, and you guys know what that means, if you're willing to do whatever it takes within moral and ethical boundaries, and you have the financial means to pay for a coach long term, somebody that's gonna play in your actual in your field, not just stand on the sidelines and cheer, but actually get involved. I want you to reach out to me. Go ahead and look on my website, www.wealthxpro.com. My cell phone number, by the way, is 907-414-5337. Shoot me a text, give me a call. I'd love to connect with you. Please share this. If you know somebody that is A, looking for a coach because they don't have one, B, they have a coach and they're not happy with it, C, they're trying to be a coach and they don't actually meet the criteria we talked about, please share this to make sure it gets out to them. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. I want you to have a great Friday. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.